The tale of Coca-Cola is a fascinating journey through the origins and evolution of one of the most recognizable brands in the world. From its humble beginnings as a tonic for headaches and fatigue, to its rise as a global phenomenon that touches the lives of millions every day, Coca-Cola has shaped popular culture and commerce for over a century. Its timeless logo, signature flavor, and innovative marketing strategies have made it a household name and a symbol. Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about the story of Coca-Cola. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of the latest updates on our channel. Coca-Cola, commonly known as Coke, is a carbonated soft drink that is manufactured by the Coca-Cola company. The drink is consumed worldwide and enjoyed by millions of people in over 200 countries. In fact, the company sells over 1.8 billion servings of Coca-Cola products each day. The name Coca-Cola is derived from two of the drink's original ingredients, coca leaves and cola nuts, which contain caffeine. Even though the current formula of Coca-Cola remains a closely guarded trade secret, various recipes and experimental recreations have been published. This secrecy around the formula has been a significant part of Coca-Cola's marketing strategy, and only a few anonymous employees know the recipe. The story of Coca-Cola's origin is a fascinating one, rooted in the post-Civil War era of the United States. Confederate Colonel John Pemberton, a wounded veteran and morphine addict with a medical degree, began searching for a substitute for the problematic drug in the 1880s. In his drugstore in Columbus, Georgia, he created Pemberton's French wine Coca Nerve Tonic, which was made with the African cola nut as a source of caffeine, and may have been inspired by the success of the French Corsican coca wine, then Mariani. However, when Prohibition legislation passed in Atlanta and Fulton County in 1886, Pemberton responded by developing a non-alcoholic version of his French wine coca called Coca-Cola, which was marketed as the temperance drink and sold as a patent medicine with claims of curing various ailments. The first sales were made on May 8, 1886, at Jacob's Pharmacy in Atlanta, Georgia, where it sold for five cents a glass. Due to the popularity of drugstore soda fountains at the time, Pemberton's new drink was an instant hit. By 1888, three separate businesses were selling versions of Coca-Cola. A co-partnership was formed between Pemberton and four Atlanta businessmen in January of that year. But there was no signed contract to codify their agreement. Asa Candler, a young druggist who would later become a major player in Coca-Cola's history, claimed to have acquired a stake in Pemberton's company as early as 1887. Meanwhile, Pemberton's son Charlie controlled the name Coca-Cola and was a major shareholder in the March 1888 incorporation filing for the Coca-Cola company. Charlie's control over the name became a source of tension between him and Asa Candler, who purchased a one-third interest in the formula for Coca-Cola on April 14, 1888. The deal was between Charlie and Walker, Candor and Co., with John Pemberton acting as co-signer for his son. For $50 down and $500 in 30 days, Walker, Candler and Co. obtained all of Charlie's one-third interest in the Coca-Cola company, while Charlie still held on to the name. Three days later, on April 17, 1888, Half of the Walker Dozier interest shares were acquired by Candler for an additional $750. This complex series of events ultimately led to the establishment of the Coca-Cola Company and the creation of one of the world's most iconic brands. During World War II, Coca-Cola became an emblem of American patriotism and unity as the brand's executives sought to bring a sense of home to the brave soldiers fighting overseas. In response to America's entry into the war, Coca-Cola's president, Robert Woodruff, decided to provide every soldier with a bottle of Coke for just five cents, regardless of their location or the cost to the company. This initiative was met with enthusiasm, and even General Dwight D. Eisenhower recognized the importance of the refreshing beverage for morale. 
Despite the logistical challenges, Coca-Cola was determined to make sure every soldier had access to a cold drink. They sent a representative to Algeria to establish the first bottling plant, which was quickly followed by dozens of others. The company also sent 148 representatives, or technical observers, to distribute coke to American soldiers in every corner of the war zone. The Have a Coke campaign featured artwork that conveyed a deeper meaning beyond just the drink itself. Each ad depicted people enjoying a coke with a smile, emphasizing the sense of comfort and happiness that the drink brought to soldiers and civilians alike. By the end of the war, over 5 billion bottles of Coke had been distributed to American soldiers, turning Coke into a symbol of American identity and strength. Through the efforts of the Coca-Cola colonels and the widespread popularity of the brand, Coca-Cola's wartime plants were transformed into fully operational facilities, setting the stage for the company's continued success in the years to come. In the same World War, the U.S. government imposed a trade embargo on Nazi Germany, posing a significant challenge to the exportation of Coca-Cola syrup to the country. However, Max Keith, the head of Coca-Cola Deutschland, refused to let this obstacle hinder his efforts and decided to develop a new beverage that used only locally sourced ingredients, such as sugar beet, whey, and apple pomace. The name of this new drink, Fanta, was coined during a brainstorming session when Keith encouraged his team to use their imagination, and one of his salesmen suggested the catchy name. As America's entry into the war led to the German plant's isolation from Coca-Cola headquarters, Keith took charge and made Fanta the flagship product of the German branch. After the war, the Coca-Cola company regained control of the plant, formula, and trademark of Fanta including the profits generated during the conflict. However, Fanta production ceased after the reunion of the German and Dutch branches with the parent company in 1945. In response to the growing competition posed by Pepsi-Cola in the 1950s, Coca-Cola reintroduced Fanta to the market in 1955. The drink received a heavy promotion in several continents, including Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America but it was not widely available in the United States until the 1960s due to concerns that it would weaken the market position of Coca-Cola's flagship cola. In a highly publicized move on April 23, 1985, Coca-Cola attempted to reformulate its iconic drink with a new flavor known as New Coke. Surprisingly, subsequent taste tests showed that most consumers preferred the taste of New Coke over both Coke and Pepsi. However, Coca-Cola's management was caught off guard by the public's strong attachment to the original formula, leading to a negative backlash. Responding to the protests, the company reintroduced the old formula under the name Coca-Cola Classic on July 10, 1985. Meanwhile, New Coke remained available but was rebranded as Coke II until 1992, before it was ultimately discontinued in 2002. Pepsi, the flagship product of PepsiCo, has always been a fierce competitor of Coca-Cola, its main rival in the soft drink industry. While Coke usually leads in sales, Pepsi has managed to outsell Coca-Cola in some markets. Around the world, Many local brands have emerged to challenge Coca-Cola's dominance in several regions. Cola Real, also known as Big Cola, is one such brand that has gained a foothold in South and Central America. In other regions, domestic brands have challenged Coca-Cola's dominance. In India, Thumbs Up and local drink leader Pepsi are more popular than Coca-Cola, which led to Coca-Cola's purchase of Thumbs Up in 1993. Coca-Cola, however, still holds a significant market share of 60.9% in India as of 2004. In Cuba, Tropicola has replaced Coca-Cola due to the United States embargo, while in the Middle East, Mecca-Cola are popular alternatives to Coca-Cola. Recently, Coca-Cola filed a petition to cancel registrations for Thumbs Up for misrepresenting the source. Coca-Cola is not all glooming lights, as it has come under fire from various groups worldwide, 
with criticisms ranging from health effects and environmental issues to business practices. One recurring theme is the association between the drink's coca flavoring and the illegal drug cocaine, which has fueled significant public criticism. The U.S. government's seizure of Coca-Cola syrup in 1911 for its alleged harmful caffeine content also led to changes in food safety legislation. In contrast, PepsiCo began marketing its drinks to African Americans in the 1940s, tapping into a niche market that had been largely ignored by white-owned manufacturers. By promoting an anti-racism stance and attacking Coca-Cola's reluctance to hire black employees, PepsiCo significantly increased its market share, particularly among African American soft drink consumers. More recently, consumer groups, environmentalists, and watchdogs have directed sustained criticism toward the Coca-Cola company, its subsidiaries, and its products. In 2019, the company was named the world's biggest plastic polluter by Break Free from Plastic, following the discovery of plastic waste with Coca-Cola branding in 37 countries across four continents. Coca-Cola Classic's high sugar content, partially sucrose, has been linked to dental cavities and obesity, two major health concerns in the developed world. In February 2021, Coca-Cola faced criticism for a leaked employee training session that suggested employees should try to be less white, less arrogant, and defensive. In 2004, a media storm erupted over the criticism directed towards Coca-Cola after it was revealed that its Dasani water brand, which was being sold for 95p per bottle, was nothing but regular tap water. This revelation caused a widespread backlash leading to the withdrawal of all 500,000 bottles from circulation. The gravity of the situation was further exasperated by the discovery that the drink had the potential to be contaminated with carcinogenic chemicals, which further intensified the public's outrage. Despite these criticisms, Coca-Cola remains one of the world's most recognized brands and a dominant player in the global beverage industry. Nevertheless, the company must continue to respond to the concerns of its stakeholders, including customers, environmentalists, and health advocates if it is to maintain its position and reputation in an increasingly competitive and social conscious marketplace. And with this, we reach the end of today's video. As we sign off, we want to hear from you. What did you think of today's video? Share the video with your friends, colleagues, and family members. And if we've missed out on something, leave a comment below for any queries, and let's keep the conversation going. We'll be ending today's video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.